So I want to preface this video with one thing, just to get it out of the way. This is how I use my desktop, these are the applications I use, and Hatsune Miku is my waifu, so you don't need to take advice from me if you don't want to. I'm just one of the many other people that don't represent the Linux community, quote unquote, at hand. And <laughs> with that being said, you know, enjoy my takeaways in the video or disagree with them. Uh, you can always feel free to leave a comment and yell at me or dislike or like the video as well. Um, that being said, uh, yeah, enjoy the video. So I've been quite excited recently. I've been watching my statistics go up and down and up and down, and quite frankly, I'm very happy that people find my channel very exciting to watch, or if not exciting, at the very least informative and helpful to them. So I just want to say thank you for trusting me with your computer. <laughs> um, with that being said, as I was looking through, I wanted to see what other type of videos that people watch on my channel. And it, it sounds just about right. It is mostly all uh, Linux tutorials. And that's, that's cool, that's cool. But one video caught my attention, and that was called Don't Upgrade to Windows 11, Upgrade to Linux Instead. Now I've watched this video before, it is a video by Distro2, and I'm not gonna actually watch it. Uh, he basically says, you know, Windows 11 is gonna have some high requirements, and it's Are not, you gonna a Windows add, not gonna really add anything exciting. Really all it's gonna do is, you know, instead of moving to Windows 11, you should try Deepin, and you can make it look like Windows 11, and it looks pretty, and you can change the themes, and it'll respect your user privacy and freedom, and it'll look nice, and, you know, so the first time I moved to Linux, I was promised all of that. I was promised privacy, I was promised freedom, and I was promised customization. But... You kind of get that all in your head, and you get excited, and then you forget about the software that you need. Uh, maybe not necessarily need, and I'm going to get that to that in a minute, but you kind of forget about the software that you grew with. You know, your Photoshops, your WinRars, your video games, your, your crappy Adobe Flash. <laughs> um, and so, uh, over time, you kind of learn that... Linux is not an alternative Windows, an alternative to Windows. Linux is its own thing that just so happens to do the same thing that Windows can do. But you can't use it like Windows. And I don't want to sound like an elitist when I say that. I do want people from Windows to switch to Linux. I would much rather people use Linux than use Windows. But Win Linux is not a Windows, no matter how hard you try to, uh, you know, so uh, hold on, let me, let me show you. No matter how hard you try to make it look like Windows, it's not going to behave similarly to Windows. Linux is its own separate thing, it's got its own uh, ecosystem of stuff, it has its own desktop environments, it's got its own software, it might be able to run the same software that Windows does, but you're not going to come into Linux expecting it to behave just like Windows. Um, this is a very great uh, resource, it might reek of a little bit of elitism, but I, I don't personally think it does, I think it's well worth the read. Um, now, people get excited about using Linux for the first time, and when they look for their Windows software and they realize it doesn't work, they will find out about something called Wine. And Wine, it's going to take a minute to load, Wine is not an emulator, as it says. Wine is a compatibility layer for running Windows applications. Um, you can use this on Linux, Mac OS, and BSD. And surprisingly, it works very, very well. In fact, if you try to run games on Windows uh, from Valve's Steam, I'm going to actually open this up very quickly. Um, I had a NeoFetch opened. I just wanted to say that this is a Fedora running the GNOME desktop environment. It's not closing. Here we go. My bad. Um, Valve's Steam, I want to blur this out very quickly. Valve's Steam actually uses a fork 
of wine. It is based off of wine with Valve's own contributions to it. In fact, the upcoming Steam Deck is going to be using wine um, with uh, its own add-ons called again, Proton. And it's said to run pretty much all games meant for Windows flawlessly. Whatever that means, I don't think it's going to be one-to-one, -one, but it sounds very promising. I want to apologize for my fans running very loudly. This is my laptop. <laughs> um, but, you know, people start using Wine, and then they figure out how to use it, and then they start using Photoshop, and then they realize that Photoshop doesn't work the way they want it to. A lot of the Windows applications that they use just don't work the way that they did on Windows. And then usually by then, by the time they realize their software just doesn't work, they'll give up, and they'll go back to Windows. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. <laughs> if Windows works for you, Windows works for you. I would much prefer you use something that would uh, respect you, um, but that's totally your choice. Um, there's a lot of things about Linux that someone kind of needs to learn in order to kind of grow with it. Installing software is going to be different uh, depending on the computer uh, operating system you're using. It'll vary on what commands you would want to use in the terminal, but if you don't want to use the terminal, your distribution of choice will most likely have a software center, and that software center is not going to have any software that you're going to pay for. And that means that all of your professional, quote-unquote professional software is not going to be in there either. Um, so you get the opportunity, and this is what I think is fun about uh, using Linux for the first time, you get this opportunity to find ways to replace that software with freer uh, open source and possibly more customizable software. And then if you don't like that, sometimes you can find alternatives to that version of that software. They're literally built on top of that software. Um, so like, people will try and use GIMP for the first time, and I'm going to be just off the cuff. GIMP is a piece of garbage. It is literally GIMPed software. Don't use it. <laughs> um, I personally use Krita. Krita is beautiful. Krita is one of my favorite image editors ever. Um, and I wouldn't have heard about it hadn't I tried to replace Photoshop with it. And that's just kind of the beginning. You know, you can find a whole lot of great projects, uh, just even on the surface level, Now, why am I making this video? It's not because I dislike District Tube, uh, though I do have a, I don't have really have any qualms with him. I do kind of disagree on that specific approach. I do think that he's doing a lot of good for the desktop Linux community. I do disagree with him on a couple of things personally, but I don't dislike him. Uh, you know, I I like his videos. I like. Uh, I definitely like Luke Smith's videos, and I definitely find Mental Outlaw to be very entertaining. Um, but I do think that we need to kind of reconsider our approach in getting people from moving to Windows to Linux. Because Linux isn't just about replacing Windows, and it definitely isn't just about making the computer look pretty. It has everything to do with wanting to change your entire philosophy as a whole, um, how you use your computer. But with that being said, I hope you took something out of this video, and I hope I don't sound like a total dick to <laughs> my viewers. Excuse my language. And uh, yeah, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below what you think. I want to hear your opinions. I'll reply to all the ones I can, and with that being said, thank you for watching, and thank you for 130 subscribers.